The first step in casting the transhumeral amputee is to take a circumference measurement of the affected side shoulder. Place the tape measure through the axilla and over the shoulder just medial to the acromion as shown. Next, make a plaster bandage splint that is 3 inches longer than the circumference of the shoulder. The splint is made of 6 inch extra fast setting non-elastic plaster bandage and is 5 layers thick. A pre-made axilla forming board will be used to assist in application of the axilla splint. The axilla forming board is made of 8th inch polypropylene or similar plastic with the proximal edge shaped to fit in the axilla. Cut the plaster splint so that it will drape over the axilla forming board. The space between cuts is from 2 to 3 inches depending on the size of the limb. This will allow the plaster to fit snugly in the axilla. Here I'm demonstrating how the plaster will be draped over the axilla board when it is applied to the patient. Next, wrap the limb using plastic wrap to pre-compress and shape the tissue. Wrap the limb so that the end result is smooth that is, without any roping of the edges. Next, apply a nylon stocking cast sock and cut it at the axilla so no bunching occurs. Suspend the cast sock with a chest strap. Apply a piece of fabric in the axilla to protect the patient from the plaster. Next, measure the circumference at axilla level and perpendicular to the limb. First, record a skin tight measurement and then a pulled tight measurement. The pulled tight measurement will be used as a guide during cast modification for a suction socket. Additional circumferences may be taken as desired. Practice placement of the axilla forming board so that the patient will know what to expect. The amputee should be instructed to adduct the limb to hold the forming board. This is very important that the cast is taken with the limb in full adduction. Any amount of abduction will cause the socket to gap proximally especially for closed shoulder or integrated saddle designs. Wrap the limb with 4 inch elastic bandage beginning at axilla level and working distally. Wrap in a figure of 8 pattern Careful not to rope the plaster.
Next, wet the previously prepared splint, being careful not to lose track of the ends. Apply the splint to the axilla forming board in the manner shown. Place the axilla forming board with splint into the axilla. Do not force the board into the axilla, just make contact with the tissue. Have your assistant hold the board in place while you wrap one side of the plaster over the shoulder and then the other. Smooth out the plaster so there are no wrinkles. Shape the edges up to the trim line as shown. When casting longer limbs, take care not to bring the cast trim line too medial, otherwise it will be difficult to remove the cast. This casting method has been used successfully for all transhumeral socket designs, open shoulder, closed shoulder, and integrated saddle socket designs. Using broad flat pressure, shape the posterior wing to conform to the scapula, just inferior to the spine of the scapula. Shape the deltal pec deltopectoral region to provide a snug anterior-posterior dimension. With your thumbs, you should test for contact with the acromion and indent the plaster to that level if necessary. Move your anterior hand to a point about one inch proximal to the cut end of the humerus and create a slight indentation. This will provide good stability and coupling of the socket to the residual limb during forward flexion. The force couple necessary for good stabilization is anterior distal and posterior proximal. Indent the plaster distally to indicate the end of the humerus. Allow the plaster to harden and then remove the cast. Evaluate the cast. If you are not pleased with the cast, repeat the procedure. Each step in fabricating the prosthesis is important, but starting with a good cast is critical. Next, take necessary measurements to construct the prosthesis. Measure the sound side from acromion to lateral epicondyle. And then lateral epicondyle to thumb tip. Measure the amputated side lengths from acromion to end of soft tissue and also from acromion to the end of the humerus. Lastly, take any other measurements or information needed such as skin color and hand size.